Alright. Let's begin by going to flexclip.com. From here you will see all the details about flexclip. It is basically a cloud-based video editor. Just like Clipchamp, everything is done online, and despite that, this app is really fast. Another standout about FlexClip is it's more than 4 million royalty-free stock videos, pictures, music, and other assets, and its editing style, which is more like creating PowerPoint slides than the usual video editor UI. FlexClip is developed by a company called Pearl Mountain, which originated in China. The CEO of the company is Lin Xiao, and they have two offices in Wan Kai, Hong Kong and Chengdu, China. According to this, their L&D team has started way back on 2006, but FlexClip was only established in 2016. To start using the FlexClip video editor, you will need to sign up or log in if you already have an account. Just like any other apps, you can use your Google or Facebook account to log in or sign up using an email. I'll just use my Google account for this. Okay. We land at the home page of course, where you can see the projects that you have created and other popular suggestions. You can also go to your project list, your customized templates, the stock videos available in FlexClip which are in tens of thousands, and we have the cloud storage and fonts which are only available for a paid version. And you can also expand your account name here for more options, like signing out and changing your default language. You can also go to the FlexClip tutorial page where you can learn all the basics on how to use FlexClip. Then my account menu will take you to your account details like profile information, password maintenance, social media links, billing and the white list. If you own a YouTube channel, I highly suggest that you add your link here, so that when you use any of the stock music and assets of FlexClip, they will not be flagged for copyright infringement claim. Alright. Time to get our hands dirty. Let's click start from scratch button here to create a new project. From here you can select the video ratio that you want. You have all the usual video ratio here from different social media platform. I'll select the most common 16 by 9 ratio. Then you can select the project type. Timeline mode is the advanced editor where you can cut, stitch, and modify video and assets through the timeline, the usual video editor layout. Then you also have a storyboard mode which is basically creating a slideshow video, which is a lot simpler and faster way of creating a video. We'll select this as our first sample. Let's click get started. OK. You will get these tips when you first load the editor. On the left side pane you will see all the list of the elements you can use for the video, and the first tab is the templates, which is a lot and covers almost all of the events you can think of. Let's try using this travel template. As mentioned earlier, storyboard is basically a slide show, and this template has six slides or pages. Let's apply all of them to our project. We can either replace the whole storyboards or just add the six pages. Since we only have a blank page anyway, let's choose replace. There we go. We now have six slides here. And when we play it, it is basically a whole project already with music, animation, music and everything. So we just need to edit it. Just click a slide from the timeline to edit it. You can right click to change the background. For text, you can double click it and change it from the text box that will appear in the left side. Let's say, instead of slide show, make this blog. You can also try to add a media to the slide. Let's try adding one of the stock video. Just drag it to the slide the video that you want. You can then reposition it or resize, and you also have more options in the toolbar above. You can apply a filter, you can adjust the properties of the video like the exposure, contrast, brightness, saturation, and more. You can also flip and crop it. Let's try cropping it to circle. We can add motion animation to the video as well. Or you can replace it with another video from your local drive. Let's play it to preview. There we go. We now have the round video added in the slide. Now let's try adding some animated text to the slide. You can either drag it or just click the plus icon here. Then you can double click the text and edit the content from the left side. Let's say just got married here to match the round video that we added. There you go. The slide is a nice wedding theme now. Adding stock photo is basically the same concept. You can apply the same things you did in the video. We also have a lot of available stock music here. Let's look for something that fits a wedding. Love. Perfect. You can play the music to preview its sound. OK. That's nice. Just click the plus sign, and this music will be used throughout the project, replacing the other music. Give the time to download the music. There we go. Let's play the whole slide just to show you that the music is applied to the whole project.
well, you get the idea. You can also add some other elements here under the element tab, like shapes, logos, arrows, masking, and other animated or static stickers here. It's really great that Flex Clip has this many stuffs you can use in the video. You can also add some overlays for titles, and some cool background effects, and set your customized branding. When you are done editing, you can then export the project. You have two options here. First is for video. Unfortunately, the free version can only export up to 480p. This part here is a bit of a letdown, since the Clipchamp's free version now allows up to 1080p. While here, even the paid basic is only up to 720p. Anyway, you can also export the project to an animated GIF file, which can go up to 800 pixels, with 15 FPS, I believe this GIF export has no limits for free, as you will also get the maximum settings here with the paid version. Just click the orange export button to do it. But I'll not export this one yet. I'll show the export later for the timeline mode demo. And you can also still change the ratio of your project here. By the way, here at the top, you can set the name of the project. Let me rename this to sample one basic editor. That's it for a storyboard project. When we go back to the home page, you can see that the project we just create is already listed here under my project section. And you can just click the edit here to reopen the project and start working on it again. Nice. Now let's click the start from scratch again and select timeline mode now. And click get started. Since this is a timeline mode, it will automatically ask you to import a media to the project after creating it. You can click browse here to add a video, picture or music from your local drive. Just like any other video editor, we start with adding media to the project from either your local drive, from phone, recording a screen or text to speech AI tool. Let me add a local file here, my opening credit video. When a media is added, you can still add more using the toolbar above with the same options as earlier. If you want to add something from your phone, it will generate a QR code, which you can scan from your phone, so that they will be connected, and you can browse and import media from your phone. A very convenient way of connecting. You can also add a media by using Flex Clips AI tool for text-to-speech. You have a huge list of options here for languages and accents per language. It even has my native language of Filipino. Let's try English with Filipino accent. Let's try a female voice from Rosa. Then just type in the text that you want to be converted into an audio speech. Then you can click the preview button to listen to it first. Hi. This is a test of flex clip text to speech using female English. You can also adjust the speed and pitch if you want. If you are satisfied with it, you can click the save to media button and this will be saved automatically to your media pool. To use the media from your pool, you simply drag and drop them to your video timeline. Or you can also click the plus icon that will appear when you hover your mouse on the media. One unusual behavior in this flex clip timeline is, you can't drag an element anywhere in the timeline, unlike on any other video editors. As you can see here, the audio is automatically cut when I move it to the edge. To make that possible, you will need to add a scene first. And the edge of that scene is also the edge of where you can place any of the video elements. So if you want to put that audio element further to the left, you will also need to extend the blank scene further to the left. Just less freedom in laying out your video time here if you ask me. Another unusual thing here in Flex Clip Timeline is the way you lay out videos in the timeline. You do it just like a PowerPoint slide. When you have a video that you want to put in the scene, you drag it into the preview pane. Then you reposition and resize it, just like how you do it on a slide. See here, when I drag a video directly to the timeline, I will not create a new layer for it. You only get one fixed layer for video in the timeline. It does allow multiple layer for audio so you can combine different sounds, but for video, it's just one fixed layer. Which is really weird for me. To have multiple layers of video, you will need to drag the new video layer into the preview pane. But another limitation here is, you cannot combine two layers of stock video. When you drag a stock video over another stock video, it will just replace it. But for a video that is not from the stock, you can add another layer like this. But, again another limitation, you are only allowed to layer up to one video on top of another one. PIP means picture in picture, and having two or more of that is not allowed. There's too many limitations here. Once you have the video here, just like what I've shown earlier, you can modify its properties, apply shape masks, adjust speed, apply motion animations, and more. If you notice, we have a small white square icon with a line here in between the two scenes. When we click that, it will let us choose a transition effect from one scene to another. There's a lot to choose from here, and clicking one transition effect will also give you a preview on how it will look like. Let's test this warp effect. Nice. Other than that, you can add and apply other elements, just like I've shown in the storyboard mode earlier. Like adding the subscribe stock animated text for example, which you can easily edit to fit your needs. 
Since we have a speech audio here in our project, I also want to show you another great AI tool that FlexClip has, which is the auto-generation of a subtitle. To do that, go to the Subtitle tab. Then click on the Auto AI Subtitle. Since we are on a free version, you are only allowed up to 5 uses of this AI tool. From here, you can choose what content to read, and by default it is all. You also need to choose the language used in the audio of your project. In this case we are using English with Philippines accent. Let's click Next. And then you have a choice here on what format of the subtitle you want to use. You can also select between single line or double lines. I'll choose double line. And then choose this yellow font with black lining style. Then click Generate Subtitles. With 10 seconds of speech audio, it took 20 seconds to generate. Let's test it. Hi. This there is you a go. Test of text we now have a subtitle in the exact timing of the audio speech. You can also adjust the size and position of the subtitle depending on your need. And on the left side, you can also edit the subtitle itself for any inconsistencies, like this misspelled flex clip work here. We can correct that. When we play it again, everything looks good now. Another AI feature of Flex Clip that I want to show you is the auto removal of image background. Let me try to insert a picture in the scene. Well, just like stock videos, apparently, you also cannot use a stock picture over a stock video. A really weird behavior, and honestly, I am not a fan of this type of video editing, which is like PowerPoint slide type. Let's put the picture over my original video instead. There we go. Now when you click on the picture, the toolbar will give you an option to remove background. This feature is only available for pictures, not on videos. It will automatically process the picture and determine the subject and will remove the background. Just like in PowerPoint Remove Background feature, you can also refine the selection of the subject or deselection of the background here. Also, you only have 3 credits per month to do this background removal feature as indicated here at the top. I used one already and only have 2 left. Just click the download button to add the edited image to your project. There we go. Then we can add all the adjustment you want to do with the picture, like adding animations to it. Or adjust its timeline position and length. When you're done with your project, we can now export it. As mentioned earlier, we can also export this as animated GIF. But if you look at the video tab, we don't have any export button. That is because, in free version, we are only allowed to use one. Yes, just one, stock video in your project. I think I use two or three stock videos here, so it won't allow me to export my project. Why don't we just delete the whole scene too here to clear it out. There we go. We can now export. This 19 second video took 30 seconds to generate, which is decent enough. And after generating, it gives you a shareable link, and it automatically downloads the video file for you, just like in Clipchamp. The file it rendered is only 9.5 MB, which is expected as we only rendered a 480p. Is it great? Let me know in the comments below. There we go. Everything looks great. When we go to the home page, we are now presented with two projects, as it should. I also find it weird that the top horizontal menu will only be available when you go to your account. Here we go. This menu should always be available to the users. Under the tools menu, you will see a lot of functions here, but this is a bit deceitful. Since all of the functions here just opens the same video editor. Let's try this add text to video online. When you open a video, it will just open the same exact video editor in timeline mode. And it's the same with any of these listed tools, except maybe for the screen recorder, which I want to show you in this part. But do note that you can also do this in the media pool of your video project by selecting recording. We can click the start recording. It will then let you choose what to record, between screen, webcam or both. Let's do a screen recording only. Then click next step. We now need to select the audio for the recording from either the microphone, system audio, or both. I'll select system audio only. Then we can start recording. It will then let you choose between the whole screen, a specific window, or just a tab in Chrome. And if you want to record the system audio, make sure to check the share system audio checkbox. I'm not sure why, but it opens another dialog box to select what to share again. I'll open YouTube here just to produce a system audio and check if it will record it. We can just click stop to finish the recording. We can now preview it. Existing audio file that contains the speech you want to attach there we to the go. video. System audio seems to be recorded perfectly as well. We can now click download and edit which will download the recorded video, and will also open a timeline mode project, automatically adding the recorded video to it. Now let's talk about the pricing. We can just click any of the upgrade button here, and it will take you to the pricing page. Here we go. 
We have 6, 10 and 20 dollars per month packages. Let's view the detailed comparison here to give you more information. So for the resolution, the free version is only up to 480p. Then the basic $10 package is only up to 720p, which I personally think is a very silly feature. You are paying $6 a month and still get 720p. I can't help but compare to Clipchamp, where a free version allows you to export up to 1080p and have unlimited AI features like the text-to-speech and automatic subtitle generation. I don't understand why FlexClip did their pricing like this. They might not yet know that Clipchamp exists and it comes free to every Windows 11 machines or install it for free in any Windows version by getting it from the Microsoft Store. You will see a lot of limitations in this table and not only for the free but also for the paid versions as well. As you can see here, even the highest price package still has limitations in other items like the background removal, custom template, auto subtitles, and more. Which for me, is quite unusual since most of the time, if I am paying the premium package, I expect everything to be unlimited. But then again, these prices are really low. It might even be the lowest price for a fully featured video editor in the market, so maybe the compromise are these small limitations. In addition to that, many would not be using these limited features every day anyway, so that might be the logic behind this pricing, which when you think about it, is quite smart, as they will attract more users due to the cheap prices. For my personal verdict, I believe that FlexClip is a great online video editing tool. It is fast, at least most of the time. It has tons of stock assets that you can use. I don't think you'll ever need Google anymore when you use FlexClip, as it literally already has everything that you might need in your video. It also has a very competitive pricing compared to other same tools, and it is really easy to use especially for those without any video editing experiences. However, it is far from perfect. As I've already pointed out earlier, I am not a fan of their pricing scheme. They put a lot of limitations to their features, and that is fine if those features are hard to find. But, in the likes of Clipchamp, DaVinci Resolve, and other popular fully free video editing tool, you can have all the features that FlexClip offers, actually maybe even more, and everything is totally for free. Most of these free tools features are even comparable, or even more, to FlexClip's business package. My next point might be subjective, but for me, the style of video editing implemented by FlexClip is difficult to follow. And again, this might just be me. The storyboard is great for beginners. But the timeline mode, for someone with experience in video editing like me, you would want more flexibility in editing. I have used and tested a lot of video editing tools before, and all of them have the same UI and style for editing video, which is a multi-layered timeline for any of the video elements which you can stack over each other. I honestly have never encountered FlexClip's PowerPoint-like video editing style until now. Multiple layers for any video element makes it easier to lay out, overlay and combine elements with each other. But FlexClip, you are limited to one layer of video elements, then limited to only two layers of video in each scene, then limited to layout audios only on areas where there are scenes. I don't know about you, but I seem to be using the word limit very frequently in this video. But then again, if you are looking for a very easy to use video editing tool, without the need to install anything, and literally has all the stock videos, pictures, music, and other video elements that you'll probably need, then FlexClip might be the best video editing tool for you. Will I be using FlexClip for my YouTube video creations? Yes and no. Let me explain. I would probably grab a lot of stock assets from FlexClip, which I honestly love, and there's tons of them. I would export these little stock videos, pictures, animated GIF, maybe even music, then use the exported FlexClip videos. But I would still prefer to use the multi-layer style video editor to stitch everything together. Not because FlexClip editor is bad. Not at all. I'm just really very familiar of using the multi-layer timeline style. But we don't know, maybe in the future I would prefer to use FlexClip alone, especially now that they have given me a lifetime business license to create this video. Thank you FlexClip. Yes, FlexClip sponsored this video, but obviously, all the opinions expressed here are mine alone and was never influenced by anyone. The FlexClip representative mentioned an option to give me more lifetime licenses, and if they do send me more licenses, I will give that license away to you, my loyal subscribers, through raffle or something. So watch out for that and make sure that you are subscribed to the Ribby Trivia channel so you won't miss it. If you enjoy this video, give me a thumbs up. If it has helped you in any way, please do consider subscribing to the channel. Nilasuj for watching. Noba Air.